In this video, we're going to solve problem 8.1.071. Actually wrote 17 here, so I've got some white out over there that's drying right now. This is a problem from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're just asked to evaluate a definite integral. It's the integral from negative three to zero of this function to raised to the one minus x power. So there are a few things that we've got to concern ourselves with here. Now this one is not as important as the others, but I always like to think about what it is this represents. If you've got bounds here, what that represents is area. If your function is positive all the time, and it turns out that this exponential function is, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the area between that function y equals f of x and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b and the x-axis. So this is actually calculating an area between a particular exponential function and the x-axis between x equals negative 3 and 0. So we're going to graph that just to visualize what's going on there. Now because this is a definite integral, we also have to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that says that under certain conditions, and that with that, that's what that asterisk is for, is the integral from a to b of f of x dx is capital F of x evaluated at b and evaluated at a and subtracted. Now this capital F um, satisfies this. So if you take its derivative, you get the function back. In other words, capital F is one of the antiderivatives of little f. Usually it's just the one where c equals zero. So we just take that, we plug in b, we plug in a and subtract. So that's what will be necessary here. Um, and that involves uh, finding that antiderivative. It turns out for this function, we don't have a basic rule for that, so we're going to have to use u substitution in order to um, find the antiderivative of this guy. So um, let's get started by visualizing um, what it is we're doing. Let's find the, the picture that's representing that area, because this is area under the function given by y equals 1 or 2 to the 1 minus x between x equals negative 3 and 0. I'm just going to make a simple t-chart in order to do that. And I'll let x equal negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. When x equals negative 3, y equals 2 to the 1 minus 3. So that's 2 to the 4th, which we all know is 16. When y, x equals negative 2, we get 2 cubed, which is 8. When x equals negative 1, that's a 2 squared, which is 4. And when x equals 0, we just get a 2 to the first. So this is what our graph looks like. So that's 16. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK. And when x equals negative 3, y equals 16. And when x equals negative 2, y equals 8. And when x equals negative 1, y equals 4. And when x equals 0, y equals 2. So this is our exponential function. You might recognize it as the graph of y equals 2 to the x. It's been flipped across the y-axis and then shifted one unit to the right. But what we're looking for here is the area between that exponential function and the x-axis for x between negative 3 and 0. So we're trying to find that area right there by evaluating that integral. Now you don't have to draw this to evaluate the integral, but I like to, to visualize what it is we're doing. Okay. So if I want to evaluate this integral, I have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. And in order to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, I need to be able to take the antiderivative of this guy. Now, the first thing I do is I look at this and I ask myself if any of my basic rules apply. I've got a number raised to the 1 minus x power. And I don't have anything like that on my list. But I do have a number raised to the x power. So that's really close to what we have. Unfortunately, I don't have just an x, I have a one minus x. That tells me that u substitution is probably the way to go. So um, whenever you're doing u substitution, 
you're looking for a function nested inside of another function. And I see I've got this one minus x in the exponent of the um, exponential with base two. So I'll let that be my u. I'm never 100% sure it's gonna work until I compute du, so I compute du. Remember how we do that, you, you take the derivative of this first, derivative of one is zero, derivative of negative x is negative one, and then you multiply by dx. So negative one dx is du. Now, if I'm doing a u sub, I have to take everything up here, including the bounds, and I need to write all of that in terms of u instead of x. Right now, all of this is in terms of x. So I need to find dx in terms of u. So I'll take this equation and I'll solve it for dx by multiplying both sides by negative one. So dx is negative one du. And then this is two to the u power. The two is still there. Now I'm not quite done yet. In order for these to truly be equal to each other, I need bounds for u. This is an area under the curve between x equals negative three and x equals zero. It's that area. In order for this to be equal to this, I can't use x values here. These have to be u values. I need a different area under a different curve, the curve given by y equals negative two uh, to the u power. Um, from u equals some value to u equals some other value in order to evaluate this. It's actually pretty simple. In order to get the bounds, you just take that equation for u and you substitute in the original bounds. So our old upper bound was x equals zero. So this is gonna give us our new upper bound. If I substitute in x equals zero right here, I find out that u has to equal one. So my new upper bound is u equals one. And then if I substitute in x equals negative three here and simplify one minus negative three is four, since negative three was my lower bound, this is my new lower bound. So u starts at four and goes to one. I know that that's counterintuitive. You're used to the smaller number being at the bottom. You can multiply this whole thing by negative one and flip it if you want, that's fine. That's something that we learned in um, calculus one, that if you flip those, you get the, the right answer. You just have to multiply by negative one. So let's do that. So that would make that a positive integral of two to the u from u equals one to u equals four. And then we evaluate this guy. Okay, so we took our integral in terms of x, we wrote it entirely in terms of u, we've got a new integrand, we've got a new du, we have new bounds. Now the next thing we do with a u substitution is we actually evaluate that antiderivative. If I go to my rules, I see, well it's that rule right there. We're using a u instead of an x, but that's no big deal. It's just a dummy variable. So my base is two, so that means a equals two, and the antiderivative is one over natural log of two times two to my variable power. My variable is u, not x. So what we're gonna get is a one over natural log of two times two to the u power, and we're going to evaluate this from u equals one to u equals four. And one over natural log of two is a constant, so I'm gonna bring that out. And then I'll have uh, two to the fourth minus uh, two to the first. And that step right there corresponds to that step right there. I'm just plugging in four, I'm plugging in one, and I'm subtracting. And I just happen to factor out that constant. That's uh, 16 minus two is 14. And so we end up with 14 over natural log of two. And that's our answer. And if you're saying to yourself, what on earth does that represent? That's a number. So let's take the calculator out and see what it is uh, in decimal form. I guess it would be technically a decimal approximation, not exactly the right answer, but it's close. It's about 20.2 units. Saying, what does that mean? 
This area right here is 14 divided by natural log of 2, which is about 20.2 square units. That's what the area between that curve, given by y equals 2 to the 1 minus x is, between x equals negative 3 and x equals 0.